Hello and welcome back. And have you guys noticed just how cheap M.2 NVMEs are starting to become. Not so long ago, I remember when M.2 NVMEs, particularly the higher performance ones, were about five to six times the cost of traditional hard drives. However, right now, halfway through 2025, things have got a damn sight more affordable. You can even pick up up to four terabytes of M.2 NVMe storage for about 200 NICA. So it's basically twice the cost of hard drives. So a lot of users are wondering, is now the time to jump on board network attached storage devices that focus on M.2. Now, we did a video about six months ago, just on the run up to Christmas, when we saw an influx of M.2 NVMe systems arriving in the market from not only the usual network attached storage brands, but others in the market that are starting to emerge. And halfway through 2025, we wanna know what are the best options for you? Now, in this video, I'm gonna go through five, technically six, different options that I believe are the best M.2 NVMe SSD NAS devices in the market. However, they've all got their own strengths. So do keep in mind there are other options in the market, and I recommend you check out that video from last year, because there are a few other options that are on that list, although a little bit on the old pricey side, and particularly one in today's video as well. Keep in mind, there is a reason some of these are more expensive than others, and when you do scale down a lot of network attached storage devices to capitalize not only on the small form factor of these devices but at the same time be able to eke out all the performance you need you also have to factor in not only power consumption but heat temperatures and more so the best m.2 nvme systems you know, for 24 seven utilization are ones that really do go, go the extra mile when it comes to cooling, not just performance. But without further ado, let's crack on with our first recommendation. What am I? A minute and a half into this video and I've already broken my own rules. Our first recommendation is actually two recommendations. It is this, the B-Link ME Mini, and this, the GMK Tech G9, a four times M.2 and six times M.2 NVMe SSD NAS system. Neither of these arrive with an operating system by default, but you can utilize it with true NAS, utilize them with Unraid, utilize them with Open Media Vault, whatever software you choose to use. Another thing worth highlighting is they both take advantage of the new Twin Lake series of CPUs. They both arrive with the quad core N150 CPU. They've both got pre uh, soldered memory, by the way. Both have got 12 gig of memory. You can't upgrade it, but that's still a decent little amount to get out of the gate. And they both arrive with dual 2.5 gig Ethernet ports there on the rear. Now, affordability wise, these are absolutely Billy Banger. I have seen the G9 as low as $169 in some places for this four bay. Keep in mind, it's not just those four slots, which by the way, are at Gen 3 times one speed each, but on top of that, it also has a 64 gig storage module inside that you can boot your operating system of choice from. It's a neat little extra for an incredibly low scale box. It also has a myriad of connections all the way around, making it effectively, and that has a docking station for attaching a myriad of multimedia outputs and storage drives and accessibility and upgrades. Keep in mind, both of these as well have M top two key Wi-Fi connections, which you can now take advantage of in Unraid 7. So not only have you got your two 2.5 GBEs, but you can also scale out to what a Wi-Fi failover connection as well within Unraid. You can even take advantage of things such as M.2 to Oculink adapters or M.2 to PCIe upgrades to add even more scalability and even M.2 to start to upgrade to add more storage drives, add 10 GBE or whatever it is you want to do. Now things scale up ever so slightly more on this one. Now the B-Link ME knocks around around the two to 230 NICA mark. You can get it with a crucial SSD included as well, but ultimately it's largely the same, but it scales things up. It's got that M150 CPU. It also has an internal PSU, so no need for a bulky uh, external power brick. Again, this one takes advantage of USB type C power, which is even more unique. This has got six M.2 slots. Five of them are at uh, Gen 3 times one speed, and one of them is Gen 3 times two speed. And this also also has a little block of EMMC storage to keep things moving as well. Both of them incredibly low scale, low impact NAS server solutions that allow you 
that six watt TDP CPU to be scaled out tremendously towards a little tiny little Proxmox server there, although it's not going to blow your whistle, uh, blow your head off, I should say. On top of that, you've got Plex Media Server you can take advantage of, or low to mid-level backups for all of your devices. Again, when it comes to the cost entry point of M.2 NVMe, it's systems like these that have really changed the game. Six slots, not enough for you. This is the Terramaster F8 Plus. It arrives with an N305 8-core Intel processor. It's the order legs of the previous generation processor series from the one we just talked about, but this has got eight M.2 NVMe slots. It also arrives with 10 gigabit ethernet there on the rear. Only a single port, so no failover, and each one of those slots is at times three, uh, is gen three times one. But nonetheless, this is eight M.2 NVMe slots combined, by the way, with not only the option of using Unraid or TrueNAS if you want, but you can also go ahead and use their own operating system, TOS 5 or TOS 6, which although not quite as polished as the likes of Synology DSM or QNAP QTS is still quite feature rich and it is actually quite hard to find affordable M.2 NVMe flash systems right now coming out of China that have their own operating system. This is not taking advantage of that FNOS closed source Chinese operating system that a lot of the uh, brands coming out of that region are starting to utilize. This is their own in-house OS that's been in development for well over 10 years with plenty of firmware updates. Although it's not foolproof, few things are these days. I will say that if it comes to an off the shelf turnkey NAS solution where you don't want to dick around getting your own uh, DIY operating system of choice and start setting up secure pathways, at least in this one it allows a lot more hand holding out of the gate. And also it's actually not too expensive and regularly on sale at local seasonal events in a way that some of the others won't be. So again, I recommended this one before, I believe it was in a previous video. And although what it lacks in failover, I will say, in simply out the box usability, it's very hard to fault this. Next up, we have the CWWK P5 and P6 series of flash devices. This is a four bay M.2 NVMe storage system. Again, the whole thing is metal all the way around, something completely absent from those other devices there with a large heat sink there at the top and four M.2s there. There's also an additional slot located underneath there that give you the ability with an adapter to take advantage of a Wi-Fi connection, as well as scaling out, as mentioned, to some of those M.2 to PCIe, Oculink, and even direct to 10 GBE or SATA output connections there. This doesn't arrive with any kind of operating system, but it's one of the cheapest for its build that you can get. I've seen this as low as $130 to $140 in some places. Indeed, their own website regularly has offers on this. It also arrives with a, a myriad of accessories that only allow you to add additional cooling if you need it for those heftier drives that you might put inside here. But on top of that, you've got your external power brick there. Again, a very lightweight power brick indeed. It's a low power consumer device and it's currently available with the N100, the N305, the N150 and the N355. They're even developing a 10 gigabit ethernet version just around the corner. Now to add to all of this, you can even add SATA SSDs and hard drives if you choose to. So the scale out on this is actually a little bit more flexible than some of the other ones we've discussed. Alongside the P5 and the P6 being among the smallest M.2 NVMe systems on today's list, the brand behind this CWWK is constantly scaling out. For example, this is a dual 10GBE equipped alternative to this device. It's got a couple of M.2 NVMe slots inside, but it also allows for scale out towards upgrades that not only allow you to add six more M.2 NVMe's to the baseline system, again, you can screw and build vertically, but on top of that, combination cards like this one that not only add six SATA base there, SATA SSDs or hard drives, but also allows to add further M.2 NVMe slots with all of that data coming via a Gen 4 times 6 cable running directly into the device. And again, that is an i5 CPU inside there. It's a little bit more expensive than the P5 and P6 base model, but nonetheless, this little cluster of devices here when it comes to M.2 NVMe deployment really needs to be checked out.
Next up, I include this, the Ugreen DXP480T, another NAS that was in last year's video. The reason I'm re-including in this one is when I was talking about this last year, the software still had a ways to go, but Ugreen have doubled down on it, improved a lot of the features, improved the performance, and it makes me a lot more comfortable in recommending this as an M.2 NVMe flash storage system for those of you that maybe want something with a little bit more Hmm, power under the bonnet there. Rocking out with an i5 10 core CPU uh, and eight gig of DDR5 memory that can be scaled up to 64 gig. In this, we have not only a 10 gig ethernet port there on the rear, but we've also got a couple of USB 4 Thunderbolt 4 ports, which are soon going to be supporting direct connectivity there within that software. It has four M.2 NVMEs, and I'm pleased to say this is the only NAS we've talked about so far that has Gen 4 times four NVMEs me slots in there. That means you can get some of those SSDs that can crank up to 7,000 megabytes per second and populate two of those M.2 slots with it. There's also two more M.2 slots at Gen 3 times 2 and an additional 2242 length SSD slot inside as well for an operating system. And remember, if you don't want to use their OS, you can also use TrueNAS or uh, Unraid if you wish. There is also a Wi-Fi up, uh, Wi-Fi network card, which again, Unraid 7, lovely stuff for a failover. Ultimately, this is probably one of the more snazzier looking devices, and they're a brand that is already kind of stretching their arms to the world of NAS. Although they haven't been around the block, like your Synologies, your QNAPs, your Chero Masters, and your Acer stores, I'll still say that Ugreen have done a bloody great thing with their first generation M.2 NVMe, and even now, halfway through 2025, it's still an absolute banger. Did you really think we wouldn't get for an M.2 NVMe video without talking about the flash door? I'm sorry, I simply can't. This is the flash door Gen 2. Last year when we made that video, I mentioned as an honorable mention that Acer Store were on the cusp of releasing the flash door Gen 2. Fast forward half a year and now it's commercially available. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, this is by far the most expensive NAS on today's list. It re retails, Depending on where you shop around, you're looking about 1,500 nicker of your local currency, factor in your tax, factor in your logistics. But for that, you get a 12 bay M.2 NVMe storage system. You get a system that not only has two 10 GBE network connections, it also has two USB 4 direct connections there. Now, AMD apparently have started backing away from supporting that for direct connection, so it sounds like direct connectivity on this across multiple clients is looking limited. Although I achieved success using a Windows 10 system, apparently not everyone got that. So I'm reluctant to recommend direct connectivity on this, although if you want to connect this directly to another Acer store via USB 4 for connectivity and transfers, you can do that. But nonetheless, they still have 20 gigabits per second 12 bay M.2 NVMe storage system. Now keep in mind again, as mentioned, one, it's pricey. Keep in mind two, the lane distribution here of Gen 4 and Gen 3 slots at different speeds is a little bit all over the place. So do check that out, check out my full review before you go for it. But much like the TerraMaster, and the Ugreen, it arrived with its own operating system, a BTRFS uh, file system uh, operating system called ADM, with a myriad of mobile applications, desktop client tools, and more. Again, like the ones we've mentioned, it isn't quite as evolved and as slick as DSM and, AD, uh, DSM and QTS, but it's actually further than the other two that I've mentioned with a decent range of features included with it. And they were one of the first brands to not only support right to repair on this, but also allow for third party operating systems. They, again, were one of the first to go with that one to allow you to install your own OS, but they will still honor the warranty there for you. Ultimately, the flash door is probably always gonna be in my list of M.2 NVMe storage systems because it's the most evolved of all. Just know it will hurt your wallet just a wee bit. But there you go, those are the best M.2 NVMe NAS systems I would recommend right now, halfway through 2025. There are some absolute banger hybrid systems coming out very, very soon that you should keep an eye on. And of course, there are brands like Arico that are slowly on the cusp of rolling out their own dedicated flash solutions, along with Gen 2 series devices from some of the brands that we've talked about coming way, way, way later at the end of the year. But at least for now, if what you're looking for is to take advantage of the ever-increasingly affordable M.2 
and BMEs that provide lower power consumption and higher performance, these are some great options to keep in mind. Just know that some of them are affordable for a reason and some of those small scaled down, more power efficient CPUs don't quite have the bandwidth to really spread things out in terms of lanes and just sheer performance internally for you to maximize the potential performance. So when it comes to spending more, you do generally get more for what you pay. So keep that in mind. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. There should be an article linked below going into more detail along with links to not only get hold of each of these devices, but also to read their individual reviews here on NAS Compare. So I recommend you check that out. And if you found this video helpful, and if you want to help out the channel and those stores below or ones that you were gonna to go to anyway, please use those links. It results in a small commission coming to me here at NAS Compares, and it's just me and Eddie doing this, and it allows us to keep doing what we do. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.